Hey guys, Coach Jorge Capistani here. Got my rocking daughter Carly. In today's little video lesson, we're going to or cover the topic of how to hit the ball on the rise. Okay, a lot of people don't have the skill, or they they kind of suffer because they don't, because this high bounding ball pushes them back a lot. Carly, so taking the ball on the rise, I think there's a couple first things you got to know. Uh, you have to decide if you're going to back up or not. The option of not backing up means you're going to take it on the rise. So you're going to hold your ground. You're going to change your swing rather than change your court position, okay? This is a good option to have. I think you should have it in your arsenal because if you don't, let's say, just sake of argument, I'm playing a moon baller, they're hitting me deep. So I run back here, here's four or five steps. I hit the ball, here's four or five more steps and they lob me again and this, this is a lot of extra running. Where if I had the option to take it on the rise, I literally don't get pushed around the court. I can just kind of hold my ground, a lot less energy being expended. Two things I want to teach you about this. Number one is that you really have to understand how close you got to get to the ball. So I'm going to use this ball and let's just say as an example, it bounced right there. So remember, this ball is coming from high. It's kind of like a moon ball lob thing. If I'm this close to it, it looks like I'm pretty close, right? But what will happen is because the ball bounced straight down, it's going to go straight up. It won't have its normal trajectory of kind of low, it's going to be very high. So already by the time that ball travels the other four feet to me, it's probably going to be up here way out of my strike zone. So if I wanted to take that on the rise, I need to crowd it. Sometimes my left foot needs to be almost as close to the ball where the ball bounced. Second thing I want to teach you is where what strike zone you're going to have. So we like to think about strike zones as being four strike zones. Uh, I refer to this all the time on the screen right now. You can see that the first strike zone, the lowest, this applies to forehand and backhand side. Uh, we'll call that strike zone one, that's below the knees and the ground. Uh, between the knees and the waist, we call that strike zone two. Uh, the waist and the shoulders, we call that strike zone three. And then above the shoulders is strike zone four. All right, so those are the strike zones. So Carly, here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to practice a couple things. So I got mom over there. She's gonna start throwing a bunch of moon balls here. So go ahead and, and hang in here. What I'd like for you to do is take it really early and take it like in strike zone one. Mm -hmm. All right, so really crowd that ball. Let's just see you practice. Not bad, you got a little wood on it, but it was pretty good. Nice. So you'll see, because Carly has the timing of this, She's not getting pushed around the court. She's taking basically one step and holding her ground. Beautiful. Now, that's one option, okay? So there, I thought you were taking most of those pretty early, somewhere between strike zone one and strike zone two. It was definitely below your waist. In my opinion, that's the easiest because your swing can be really compact. Mom, will you throw me one of those? Look at how short I could make this. If I literally get there. I could just do like a two inch swing and it'll work, but it's all about aligning myself. So do another one and I'm going to see if I can align wrong. So that ball, no, that was too good. Sorry. Try to leave a little bit shorter this time. So watch, you see that the ball bounced there. I didn't crowd it and that strike zone was above my head. I had to get up to keep that strike zone down a little bit. All right. So that's a huge thing that we're trying to learn is just how to take that on the strike zone. Now, as players progress, you see the pros do this, they have more options. One of the options that you'll see the pros do if they get a little nasty ball like this, is they'll just kind of half volley it back, boom, boom, like you were, and they just kind of neutralize the point. However, if the ball may lands maybe a little bit shorter, they'll time it, they'll kind of position themselves not to take the ball down below the waist, but to let that ball rise up into strike zone three, and now they can actually drive it. So it's another way of taking the ball on the rise. It depends on the skill level of the player. So let me try one here, see if I can do it. So I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and, I'm gonna let this one, oh, sorry. I'm gonna let it get up in strike zone three, hopefully. And right there. Okay, you see I hit that baby right about there in slow motion. You can see that's strike zone three, roughly. Okay, now, what I, here's your assignment. I want you to do alternating. Take one on the rise really low, the other one let it get up in strike zone three and you're aggressive. Okay, so this would be neutral or kind of defensive. Okay, good. This one, align yourself and smack. That's all right, you miss hit it, but you lined up well. Okay, this is the bump, that's it. So there you're seeing Carly doing the two options that I think you have. Okay, it's really all about aligning yourself properly. And that has to do with how close you're getting to the ball. Most people don't understand exactly how close they have to be to the ball to take it on the rise 
and then they do that classic they hold their ground and then they realize the ball's still way out of their strike zone. So we're gonna end up with this little thing here. <laughs> the way I like to teach this also, it has a certain sound when you take it on the rise. It's kind of like a heartbeat. ba boom ba boom That represents the ground and the hit. They're almost simultaneous. So Marty, will you feed me a normal forehand? Listen to this. That's bounce, whoa, and hit. <laughs> okay, go again. Bounce, hit. So you listen to that rhythm. Bounce, hit. Okay, now watch. Give me a moon ball. Bounce, hit. So you see the difference? The, a normal ground stroke is bounce, hit. Bounce, hit. A uh, half, or like with these half volley or on the rise, it's more like bounce, hit. It's a little bit crowded. So the reason you might want to do this is because you don't want to end up being this victim, which is you, if you don't have these options, here's your only option. So moon ball me again, Marty. I back up, oh boy, and I hit it, and then I get back in here, and I split step, and I'm ready, and then I'm doing all this extra work. So there you have it, the how to take the ball on the rise, two things to take away, all about aligning yourself for the various strike zones that you wanna try. It's really important that your swing gets a little bit more compact Okay, it's not a big giant swing because there's a lot of power on the ball. All right, so hopefully that's helpful to you. I'm Jorge, this is my daughter Carly. If you're watching this anywhere other than our two websites, tennisdrills.tv is our coach's website, and also jorgecapistani.com is our player's website. If you're watching it there, make sure you scroll down and you leave us some comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, leave them there and I'll make sure I answer. And thanks again to Carly. Hopefully that helps you with how to take the ball on the rise.